Next question. Anonymous asks, what is your opinion on Mimblewimble? Um, okay, first a quick explanation. For those who don't know, Mimblewimble is a very interesting proposal that uses some particular quirks of uh, mathematical quirks, cryptographic quirks, to create a blockchain that, that uh, massively um, reduces the size of the blockchain and of transaction by essentially summarizing a lot of that information and only keeping the summaries in a way that you can still verify everything. Everything is validatable and verifiable independently, but you don't need to store everything. And it also massively increases privacy at the same time. Now, Mimblewimble is not something that you simply slap on top of Bitcoin, although there are some proposals to adapt it somehow. At the moment, it's running as a testnet. Um, so it's a blockchain of its own with its own technology. And I believe the um, the currency that they're using on that testnet is called a Grin, uh, but I'm not sure. Lazar asks, could you explain and go deeper into digital signature aggregation via Schnorr signatures, and to what extent would their application increase Bitcoin anonymity? Um, I'm going to try to explain this, uh, and a caveat here. Um, this is a topic that I'm not uh, entirely versed on, and um, I I'm going to try my best. Let's see how I can go. So digital signature aggregation and Schnorr signatures are, are really two different things. Uh, Schnorr signatures are a particular type of digital signature, and the primary advantage they have over other forms of signatures is that they're shorter, they're smaller, um, compared to uh, ECDSA, elliptic curve digital signature algorithm. The, the advantage of Schnorr signatures is they're more compact, as far as I understand it. Digital signature aggregation, however, is another capability that Schnorr signatures can enable. And what they do is they allow you to essentially summarize. Um, I think summarize would be the right word. Aggregate, of course, is the word you used. Um, it's called digital signature aggregation. But essentially, you add all of the signatures together. And I use add not in the um, traditional one plus one equals two. We're, we're talking about mathematical operations that are happening in a prime field on an elliptic curve. Um, but nevertheless, for simplistic purposes, you use a mathematical operation to aggregate all of the signatures in such a way that you can still validate that something has been signed, but you can't see. Um, you can't see the individual signature for that item. Now, in the case of Bitcoin, what that does is two things. One, it saves a lot of space. Schnorr signatures are already more compact. And let's say you have a transaction which has five inputs and it requires five signatures. Um, you're going to put all each input needs to be signed. So first you sign them with Schnorr signatures. Great. Now you've saved some space. Then you take the five signatures, you aggregate them, and you produce just one signature for all five inputs. And that one signature is the same compact size as each of the five signatures. So you've now decreased the space of the signatures by 80% by taking away you know, four out of the five. You've, you've, you've got those five signatures aggregated in the same space as one. Um, then imagine that those transactions belong, uh, that transaction is some kind of uh, joint transaction where the inputs come from many different individuals who are providing their own signatures. You've aggregated all of those, and um, that way you can't really tell, although you can tell that the signature is valid for all of the inputs, and that it properly corresponds to the public keys of those inputs, um, you can't really tell uh, who applied those signatures. So as a result, it, it makes privacy in things like CoinJoin more secure. And again, I probably got some things wrong there. Um, this is a topic that is still, first of all, it's, it's still in development. Uh, the only example of this in, in use today is in the, I believe in the element sidechain, which is a blockstream project. And this is being developed actively by a whole bunch of people, including uh, Greg Maxwell and Adam Back, um, and I believe Andrew Polster, but I might be mistaken. 
So uh, this is still very early days, but it's the kind of thing that can be added to Bitcoin thanks to SegWit and script versioning. It can be added by a soft fork, uh, and it will be a way to increase the capacity of the network by compressing the data rather than increasing the, the space.